So Meta CEO Zuckerberg and NVIDIA CEO Jensen yesterday had an hour long talk about the future of AI, about the AI tools, how it's going to empower individuals, how it's going to empower businesses and creators to do their task a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. So let's listen to a few of the points that they make. This is kind of like a super cut. The talk was an hour long. I'll put their link in the description if you want to listen to that. But this is kind of a really good summary of what they talked about. So we'll listen to what they're saying and then kind of point out and I'll show you guys exactly what they're talking about by these different tools that they've introduced. So let's go ahead and start it. The, uh, uh, the advances of generative AI at Meta today and how do you apply it to either enhance your operations or introduce new capabilities that you're offering? With generative AI, um, I think we're going to quickly move into the zone where not only is, is the majority of the content you know, that you see today on Instagram, you know, just recommended to you from kind of stuff that's out there in the world that matches your interests to whether or not you follow the people. I think in the future, a lot of this stuff is going to be created with these tools too. Some of that is going to be creators using the tools to create new content. Some of it, I think eventually is going to be content that's either created on the fly for you um, or, or, or kind of pulled together and synthesized through different things that are out there. So I, I kind of, Okay, so that's a very important point. So what he's talking about is that in the future, not only will your creators create their own original content, but they will actually have an AI assistant or an AI version of themselves that will actually create a specific content based on your interests. So it's not just recommending content, it's actually they're gonna be using these AI tools like the AI Studio that Meta recently reduced, uh, introduced the other day. Uh, so example, you can check it out here. This basically says that you can actually create a AI extension of yourself, which means that your audience will be able to interact with this AI extension of you, that they can talk to you, they can DM you, and you can actually customize this AI tool by uh, training it on your own content. So you can train it on your posts, on your reels, on your comments, on your Instagram stories. So we'll have all of this data and essentially act as you when they're interacting with the audience. So this is gonna be super interesting. That's exactly what he was uh, pointing out. So I just wanted to quickly uh, make sure you understood what he said. All right, let's keep going. Dream of one day, like you can almost imagine all of Facebook or Instagram being you know, like a single AI model that has unified all these different content types and systems together that actually have different objectives over different time frames, right? Because some of it is just showing you, you know, what's the interesting content that you're going to be, that, that you want to see today. But some of it is helping you build out your network over the long term, right? People you may know or accounts you might want to follow. And these, these multimodal models yeah. tend to be, yeah. tend to be much better at recognizing patterns, weak yeah. signals and such. And yeah. so one of the things that people, people always, you know, it's so interesting that AI has been so deep in your company. You've been building GPU infrastructure, running these large recommender systems for a long time. Now yeah. you're now well, you're a little slow on it, actually, getting to GPUs. Yeah, I was trying to be nice. I know. Well, no. tell everybody about the Creator AI and AI Studio that's going to enable you to do that. Yeah. So, so we actually, I mean, this is something that we're we're you know we've talked about it a bit, but we're rolling it out a, a, a lot wider today. Um, you know, a lot of our vision is that I don't think that there's just going to be like one AI model, right? I mean, this is something that some of the other companies in the industry, they're like, you know, it's like they're building like one central agent and, and yeah, we'll, we'll have the meta AI assistant that you can use. But a lot of our vision is that we want to empower all the people who use our products to basically create agents for themselves. So whether that's, you know, all the many, many millions of creators that are on the platform or, you know, hundreds of millions of small businesses, um, we eventually want to just be able to pull in all your content and very quickly stand up a business agent and um, be able to interact with your customers and you know do sales and customer support and all that. So the one that we're that we're just starting to roll out more now is um, we call it AI Studio, and it basically is um, a set of tools that eventually is going to make it so that every creator can build sort of an AI version of themselves um, as as sort of an, an agent or an assistant that that their community can interact with. There's kind of a fundamental issue here where there's there's just not enough hours in the day, right? It's like if you're if you're and there you go. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. So you train these AI agents through the AI studio from your Instagram account, and essentially your um, 
audience will be able to interact with you, not you, an extension of you, this AI agent that's going to be trained on your data, on your tone of voice, the way you communicate, the way you talk to uh, your audience, the way you make Instagram posts, reels, you comment, all of that will be fed because essentially with their open source model, the Llama that they released recently, you can fine tune Llama to train it on your specific data and therefore have these agents that act on behalf of you that are actually an extension of you through these AI tools. So that's what he's talking about. A creator, you want to engage more with your community, um, but you, you, you're constrained on time. And similarly, your community wants to engage with you, uh, but it's tough. I mean, there's there's just there's limited time to do that. So the next best thing is is allowing people to basically create these artifacts, right? It's um, it's sort of it's an agent, but it, it's you train it to kind of on on your material um, to represent you in the way that you want. I think it it's it's a very kind of creative endeavor, almost like a like a piece of of art or content that you're putting out there. And no, it's it's gonna be very clear that it's not engaging with the creator themselves. But I think it'll be another interesting way, just like how creators put out content on on these um, social systems, to be able to have agents that do that. One of the interesting use cases that we're seeing. What he's pointing out is the fact that these AI agents will still be limited. So there's going to be times where you're interacting with the AI agent of that creator, but the AI agent will be able to have these guardrails or the creator will be able to put these guardrails where they say, hey, if a person talks to you or asks a question about a certain topic, that's off limits, meaning that you shouldn't, the AI agent shouldn't respond to certain topics that should be left for the creator to directly respond to. So that's what he's talking about, that they will be able to control what the content of the interaction will be with the customers, with these AI extensions of these creators. People kind of using these agents for support. Um, this was one thing that, that was a little bit surprising to me is one of the top use cases for meta AI already is people basically using it to role play difficult social situations that they're going to be in. So whether it's a professional situation, it's like, all right, I want to ask my manager, like, how do I get a promotion or a raise? Or I'm having this fight with my friend, or I'm having this difficult situation with my girlfriend. Like, how, how, like, how can this conversation go? And basically having a, like, a completely judgment-free zone where you can basically role play that and see how, how, how the conversation will go and, and get feedback on it. Um, but I, a lot of people, they don't just want to interact with the same kind of, you know, agent, whether it's Meta AI or ChatGPT or whatever it is that everyone else is using. They want to kind of create their own thing. So the Llama is, is genuinely important. We built this concept to call an AI factory, uh, AI foundry around it uh, so that we can help everybody build. Take, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they have a desire to um, uh, uh, build AI. And it's very important for them to own the AI because once they put that into their, their flywheel, their data flywheel, that's how their company's institutional knowledge yep. is encoded and embedded into an, an AI. So they can't afford to have the AI flywheel, the data flywheel, that experience flywheel somewhere else. So, and, and so open source allows them to do that, but they, they don't really know how to turn this whole thing into an AI. And so we created this thing called an AI foundry. We provide the tooling, we provide the expertise, uh, Llama uh, technology. Uh, we have the ability to help them uh, turn this whole thing uh, into an AI service. And, yeah. and then when, when we're done with that, uh, they take it, they own it. We, the output of it's what we call a NIM. And this NIM, this, this Neuro Micro NVIDIA inference microservice, uh, they just download it, they take it, and they run it anywhere they like, including on-prem. And we have a whole ecosystem of partners, uh, from OEMs that can run the NIMS to uh, GSIs like Accenture that, that uh, we've trained and work with to create Llama-based NIMS and, and, uh, and uh, pipelines. And, and now we're, we're off helping enterprises all over the world do this. I mean, it's really quite an exciting thing. It's really all triggered off of uh, the Llama open sourcing, the, the Ray-Ban, Metaglass. Um, Okay, so that's a very important point that Jensen just mentioned. So essentially what he's talking about when he talks about these NIMs that the businesses can utilize, it means that these are essentially, you can think about it as individual agents that are built on top of Llama's open source project. Because Llama, especially the, the huge model that they recently released, uh, 4 or 5 billion parameter, it's a very powerful large language models. So using NVIDIA's uh, AI foundries that Jensen just referred to means that 
businesses can now train these individual agents with their own data, with their own processes, and essentially utilize that as a singular and individual source that they can take and therefore deploy as their own. Because again, they will be built on top of Llama's open source project. So that's a very important uh, thing to point out there. Your vision for, for uh, bringing AI into the virtual world uh, is really interesting. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, okay, a lot to unpack in there. Um, the segment anything model that, that you're talking about, we're actually presenting, I think, the next version of that here at, at, at SIGGRAPH, segment anything two. Um, and it is it now works, it's faster, it works with, um, oh, here we go. Um, it works in video now as well. I think these are actually cattle from my ranch in Kauai. Um, <laughs> But By the way, these are what they're called delicious, Mark's cow. delicious cows. Delicious yeah. Mark's cows. Um, there you go. Yeah, another. Next time we do. So, Mark, Mark came up to my house and we made Philly cheesesteak together. Next time you're bringing the I'd cows. I'd say you did. I was more of a sous chef. The fun effects will be able to be made with this. And because it'll be open, a lot of more serious applications across the industry, too. So, yeah. I mean, scientists use this stuff to, you know, study. Um, like coral reefs and natural habitats. So this is a very cool product, actually. So the segmenting that he just talked about, where you have the ability to select the different individual items within a video, that's very cool. And actually, they released another product that I'm going to do a video about, which is called, um, let's see, I believe it's called, I can't remember what it was. Hold on one second. Yeah, it's these AI demos. It's called segmenting anything. So this is basically you can actually select an individual item within a video and you can manipulate it or add effects to it. So this is a very cool one. Actually, I'm planning to do a demo on this where I showcase kind of the different functionalities that you can right now use actually on demolab.com. So anyways, let's get back to the video. Um, and kind of evolution of landscapes and things like that. But I mean, it's uh, being able to do this in video and having it be a zero shot and be able to kind of interact with it and tell it what you want to track is, um, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool research. I think what you're going to end up with is um, just a whole series of different potential glasses products at different price points with different levels of technology in them. So I kind of think, um, based on what we're seeing now with the Ray-Ban Metas, I, I would guess that displayless AI glasses mm -hmm at like a $300 price point mm -hmm. are going to be a really big product that yeah, like tens of millions right. of people or hundreds of millions of people eventually are going to have. Um, and so then, you're going to have super interactive AI that you're talking to. You yeah. Have visual, you have yeah. visual language understanding that you just showed. Mm -hmm. You have real time translation. You could talk to me in one language. I hear it in another language. You and know? then the display is obviously going to be great, yeah. too. Okay, so this is very cool, actually. So Mark is talking about the fact that there will be releases of different price points for uh, the Meta glasses. So right now, they have a partnership with Ray-Ban. I mean, I've tried that product. It's not that great, to be honest, like uh, because it's very simple. But with this addition of these products that they're releasing, like the augmentation in video, He's talking about the fact that how you can have these family of smart glasses where based on the different use cases, it will have a different price case. Obviously, if it's a super smart glass, like the one that has the ability to segment real life video or real life interactions, and it will have a speaker. Um, and like Jensen mentioned, it will have incorporated large language model where you can interact with it via voice commands. Obviously, that's going to be very, very expensive. But you can have something like $200 where the smart glass is going to point out different things as you're seeing live and identify different uh, objects that you're seeing using the, the, the glass. Yeah. But it's going to add a little bit of weight to the glasses and it's going to make them more expensive. So I think for there will be a lot of people who want the kind of full holographic display, but there are also going to be a lot of people for whom um, you know, they, they want something that eventually is going to be like really thin glasses. And So you guys know when, when, when Zuck calls it H100, his data center of H100s, there's like, I think you're coming up on 600,000. And, and they're... We're good customers. <laughs> That's it. So H100 is uh, NVIDIA's very famous GPUs that a lot of these AI models and large language models are trained upon. You get, you get the, the Jensen, Jensen Q&A at SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH.
<laughs> it's, uh, it's ladies and gentlemen, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Thank you. All right, so that was very cool, actually. And again, if you want to listen to the whole um, hour talk, I'll put it in the description. Um, again, Meta has been on fire, releasing amazing products lately. And of course, their uh, large language model that's open source, that's going to completely change the way the AI industry is moving forward because people are going to be able to utilize these open source models to be able to build these individual AI agents that's going to be specific to their purpose, their businesses, to creators or whatever it may be. So the future is really going to be exciting to see the competition in the AI space where you have the open AIs of the world where that's kind of like a closed source and they're releasing products like ChatGPT versus Meta where they're moving towards an open source model and allowing people to build tools on top of their models and then also putting these tools or putting these new products that are built from Llama into their existing infrastructure like Instagram, Messenger, uh, WhatsApp and all these uh, existing huge user heavy products that they already own. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.